Welcome back everyone to another match of old school Magic the Gathering and today we have two really classic top tier decks uh, butting heads and that is the deck or the multi-colored -control, control deck versus a tog. If you want to skip right to the match you can there's a link in the description below. For deck text today, we're going to look first at ATOG, and then I'm going to link in the description to a really thorough video of Brian Weissman explaining what the deck or how the control deck uh, in this format works. He, ex he explains it better than me. Uh, so now let's just take a look at ATOG and what that's going to want to do to win this matchup. So this deck revolves around the creature ATOG. It's a 1-2, and you could sacrifice artifacts to it. Uh, for no cost, and it gains plus two, plus two until end of turn. Now, in this format, there are lots of artifacts, including the five Moxen, the Soul Ring, the Vice, Ankh of Mishra, and of course, the factories themselves. And for extra bonus points, you could sacrifice the Black Lotus to Atog when you come in to win the game. So typically, an Atog will come in if it's unblocked, lots of artifacts will be sacrificed to it, and the damage will be lethal. Very important for the deck is to clear the way for an ATOG, so you have Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightnings, Earthquakes, and Psy Blast to remove creatures, or if you need to, just do direct damage. The more direct damage you do to the player, the less artifacts you need to sacrifice the ATOG to swing for lethal. Overall, this deck is incredibly efficient and streamlined. It's super aggressive and fun to play, and I think it does have a good matchup against the deck, especially because ATOG can have some very fast and explosive matches. And if it can catch the deck off guard, it may be able to win. And with that, let's look at the best two out of three matchup. All right, we'll jump into the game, the deck on the bottom, and Atog on the top. So again, Atog's going to want to play quick here. Before the deck can really establish itself on the board and kind of get control, but this is looking like a big... Okay, it's so a turn one, Sarah Angel... So maybe table's turned here, the deck actually playing uh, aggressively. Of course, uh, tapped out here, so a Swords to Plowshare would be pretty big, or we do have the Plateau. And when you have a big first turn like that, of course, what's left in their hand? Don't remember. But turn one, Black Vice. I mean, normally this is a pretty good opening for Atog, actually, um, but we'll see if they have anything. Oh, they're going to... Plateau's going to get stripped, so nothing's going to stop this angel from coming in. Ancestral Recall. Excellent. To get this uh, so early in the match gives the uh, Etog player some chance for some removal. But they are not going to have it this turn, so... There's a Lightning Bolt to the player. And of course the other key... Oh, and there is a Psy Blast. I forgot, yes, the other way to take out an, uh, a Sarah Angel. Of course, we'll get two damage to the player there. So that takes care of that threat, and the ATOG player now with can start attacking with that, that factory. So turn, turn one, Sarah, you know, scary move, but eventually gets taken care of here, and the, the deck player has done nothing since that Sarah Angel missing land drops and playing... I mean, maybe they have a counter spell in their hand, or... We'll see, but and then, of course, a second factory... Okay, we're going to get a disenchant. And a second vice coming down. And the and the second factory is removed. So uh, when you're playing with four strip mines, factories are maybe are definitely less scary to deal with. You have a lot more options and ways to deal with them. You're gonna get a lightning bolt here though. So again, despite that uh 
intimidating start here. And now an Ankh of Mishra coming down. Of course, the deck has been missing land drop, so you're definitely going to get some damage from the Ankh. The game is 12 to 10, so... Uh, Atog, of course. If, if Atog does come out now, it has four artifacts that can be sacrificed to it. Okay, so Ankh is going to do two damage with that City of Brass, and then we're going to get a Lightning Bolt. Okay, and there is a factory that is going to cost two life, but that does give the deck player uh, a threat there on the board. Oh, we're going to get a Psy Blast to the player. The second Ankh coming out. And so they take two damage from the Psy Blast and one from City of Brass for three total. That puts them down to two and that makes the factory lethal. Which is what's going to come in here. And that's it. So the deck, honestly getting a little lucky there. I mean, obviously kept an opening hand for the turn one Sarah Angel and... and I mean, you could just win on that. It certainly got in for 8 damage, but that came down way closer uh, than maybe the deck wanted there. But a win's a win. We're seeing a mulligan down to 6. An Atog on the play. Turn 1, Factory Vice, Mox. That is excellent. That's going to do some damage there uh, when the turn is passed. And of course represents a, a Factory threat already on the board. Both players finding their Mox Ruby. And of course the Mishra Factory, when it is turned into a 2-2 artifact creature, that can also be sacked to Atog. So technically on the board here is now four, up to four artifacts, and there he is. The man himself. Okay, and then here comes the mind twist. So now here, okay, oh, and a Sarah Angel and the Dib. Yeah, I mean that at this point is isn't terrible there since <laughs> the third Winter Factory. Yeah, so Mind Twist doesn't... Coming in just a little late there. Yeah, I mean, the deck... Is the deck dead next turn? At 8 life? Another, another Mox artifact. Okay, we're gonna Disenchant. I will get rid of one of those factories. Which will then be sacrificed to Atog in response. So, yes, yeah, it's coming in for five, I believe. Oh, but he could sack more to Atog, and that's it. So, two really quick games. I mean, it's interesting because games with like deck versus Atog can really go on for you know, 40 minutes easy. Uh, but those are just two really quick kind of blitz games. Okay. Factory Vice, wonderful start for Atog. Okay, and the factory is stripped. <laughs> okay, and their own factory. The factory coming out for the deck and playing into a Felwar stone. So starting to develop their mana base here and getting lightning bolted in response.
another strip mine. Probably don't. Probably want to hold. I mean, honestly, you just let's say either save that for if they drop another factory, or do you just really put the pressure on and get rid of a, a one of their two lands? They are not. They're going to attack, and the factory will eat a bolt. And an ancestral recall. Is that? Do you counter that? Is there a counter? And there is. Oh no, a mana drain. Mana drain on ancestral recall, only getting you the one floating. But that is enough to play the book. Again, kind of what the deck wants to do. Oh, there's a Psy Blast. Taking a good amount of shock damage. They should have taken, yeah. Right. <clears throat> Taking two from the Psy Blast and one from the uh, city. And, there, and we're going to get a huge time twister. Okay, so that's going to put the deck player back above the vice. I mean, they're already at 8 life. A second vice. Oh, jeez. And a factory. And a chaos orb. Jeez. A huge time twister. For a tog. Let's see what the deck... Uh, down to two. Okay, two moxes. They have enough enough mana now for the book. We gotta be careful. Yeah, mm, gotta get underneath these vices. And two damage comes in next turn from the factory. But there is a strip mine. Right, absolutely strip the factory. So this turn is all about not dying next turn. How do you, how do you not die? Just gotta get under those factories now. Okay, time walk. Dust to dust would obviously be the perfect play here for both those vices. Demonic Tutor. Oh, because this is tutoring in the first turn still. So actually, you could tutor here for dust to dust, go to your next turn, take out two vices, and then you just want to just sit back and start using your book to draw extra cards. Okay, going to the time walk turn. Drawing a card. Okay, and there, okay, so the second white, the planes coming out, and the dust to dust remove two artifacts. So the factory was strip mined, and the dust to dust takes care of the vices. Of course, the ATOG just needs a lightning bolt off the top here, and it's over. Oh, they draw the factory, so that would be two damage next turn. I don't know how I feel about flipping that on the book. I feel like maybe you save that. The What's more important, like, how is the deck going to win? I mean, it has Factories, Sarah Angel, and I guess a Fireball. So it's like, maybe you keep, maybe you keep the, uh, the Chaos Orb. Okay, and, and the Sarah Angel comes right down. And a Factory. Yeah, that the orb would have been big here. But of course you never know what's coming out. Oh! And they have an, a Sarah Angel. Totally <laughs> totally unexpected. Don't think a lot of these uh, Atog decks run Sarah. 
But what a person. So now both players showing Sarah and the factories, the winter factories. So the game is kind of locked up again. Which really, Atog here just by turns. Oh, what a big brain geyser. Just by turns until you get a um, Psy Blast, a, a, a Lightning Bolt. Yeah, or a Psy Blast. So two blue and X, so one, two, three, four. Passing turn, so leaving open, there is two blue open with the Hellwar Stone, so let's see. I'm not sure who, if if the um, top player attacked with Sarah, and then the, the deck player blocked. So, Sarah's are gone. And there comes a Chaos Orb. Now that looks like a juicy uh, factory target on the other side. Okay, this is definitely being flipped on the factory. I would assume. There it is. And now this factory comes in for two. Do we have a disenchant? It gets in. All right. At this point, we assume the deck player probably maybe has at least one counter spell in hand, so it's going to need a couple bolts or side blasts from the Atog player here. And a second factory. Uh-oh. Here, oh, and Fireball coming down. Again, so most... I'm trying to think, like, more... The other versions of the deck really just run the four factories, right? Like, do they even have Fireball as a finisher anymore? But this one does, so... Dropping down to four, and there are two factories for lethal next turn. And the Serendib Afrit, so that is going to do a damage during upkeep. So they're at four life, they're going to drop two, three, and no counters there, no mana drains. The two factories coming in, and the player's just going to scoop. I guess they would have dropped them to two, and then they would have taken one. I'm not sure. Maybe they they didn't feel like they had had it there. That's a huge comeback for the deck. Again, the deck it has one life. It's it's can still win. Uh, it's just very very resilient. Always has answers. Dust to dust if it needs it. Disenchants uh, and giant fireballs. It's just very very impressive. It is fun to play as well. So uh, we'll see some other videos in the future with the deck, but uh, it wins its debut match. Thank you everyone for watching. If you want more 1990s Magic the Gathering content, please subscribe to the channel or leave a comment below.